Hey there, I'm Libby from ARC Evaluation at the University of Wisconsin-Stout. I am super excited to be celebrating our first International Chart Day. Today, we are partnering with our good friend and colleague, Devin Wisner of Wisner Analytics. We are both champions for improving how people create and use charts and graphs. We've been so impressed with Devin's work in this area that he has pushed our office to explore new ways to visualize data and share information with our clients. Hi, I'm Devin Wisner of Wisner Analytics, a boutique firm based out of Arizona. I'm excited to have had the opportunity to team up with ARC Evaluation on Chart Day. Not only do I have roots uh, going back to ARC Evaluation, but our collaboration is a perfect example of the kinds of meaningful relationships that can be formed in the field of evaluation. So one of our primary goals here today is to help other evaluators and researchers acquire the skills they need to create better charts. So to celebrate this first International Chart Day, Devin and our team have prepared a set of short videos to walk you through a new and exciting way to visualize networks. Given the impact that charts can have on information sharing and relationships, we thought it would be fun to visualize the relationship between several Twitter users through a social network analysis party, or better referred to as OSNAP. That's right, we party with data and we come up with cool acronyms. So not only will, will we be walking you through a cool chart, we will also be showing you how to create one yourself. Devin's right, we do like to have a good time. So join us throughout the day to learn, connect, and maybe we'll even have a little dance party. And we do want to send a shout out to Congressman Mark Takano, Tumblr, and the Society for New Design for bringing us this first International Chart Day. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to International Chart Day 2018. My name is Justin Sullivan. I'm with the Applied Research Center at the University of Wisconsin-Stout. And today we're going to talk about creating a social network map. Uh, the reason we're using Twitter is because other professionals in our field use Twitter to share data within our field. So uh, we really think it's an important way uh, to look at not only uh, things that are going on in our field, but in the world in general. Um, it's a really kind of versatile, rich source of data uh, that we use to make uh, comparisons. Um, so to do that, we're going to need to pull data from uh, Twitter somehow. So the method we're using today is going to be uh, using R. R is a free open source uh, computer software package uh, that can be used for many things, including programming and statistical analysis. Uh, so today we're going to be using it as a kind of interface with Twitter to actually pull data. Uh, you're also going to need, uh, in this case, R Studio. I guess I, sh I should say that R Studio is not required uh, for this demonstration, but it's a really great tool to use if you're not really familiar with R. If you don't use it, R is just a line of code, but uh, R Studio gives you a little bit more uh, to play with. Uh, to display our map, we're going to be utilizing Kumu, uh, which is a uh, mapping software. Uh, this is a free uh, program that you can sign up to use. Um, so you want to create a user account with uh, Kumu. Uh, so up next we'll be talking about how uh, we actually go about interfacing R with Twitter to pull data, and then um, eventually how we'll get that data into Twitter and uh, maybe play with the network mapping using Kumu. All right, so to get started, you should have a user ID and a password created for both R and Kumu. Uh, you should have both R and R Studio installed on your computer, and we're going to get started in R Studio. It should be noted that even though we downloaded R, we'll never actually have to open it since R Studio is able to utilize that library and provide us with a more graphical user interface. So our first task is to get R Studio to communicate with Twitter uh, using our login data that we just created with Twitter. So in R Studio, you need to download two packages. So these packages sort of provide us tools that we'll need to use to communicate uh, from R to Twitter. Uh, the R tweet package has uh, kind of Twitter tools and the HTTP UV package uh, has what we need um, to get authenticated on the web to communicate with Twitter. I uh, will say yes here. Uh, should also be noted that it may take longer for your packages to install. I think I've already installed them here a few times so um, mine are going to be relatively uh, after installing the packages, you need to call the packages to the front row of the class, so to speak, uh, so that RStudio can utilize those tools to communicate with uh, Twitter. Within Twitter, we need to get token data, which points RStudio to Twitter. Uh, the token is just a unique set of characters, uh, numbers, and letters uh, that 
Twitter assigns to us so, they, they, so that they know who is pulling data from them. Uh, so you'll come here to apps.twitter.com and you'll click new uh, to create an application. Uh, you can call it whatever you want. You do need to have a description and a website in there. Uh, I would encourage you to leave the callback URL blank. Uh, we don't need it this time and then you can um, agree to the terms and create your application. All right, so when you access your quote-unquote application, you should see something like this. Um, it should be noted that this is a test site, so any consumer keys or tokens that you see here are, are not going to be valid soon. So this is what we're after. We are after our consumer key and our consumer secret key. This is the data that we'll use to point R to Twitter. So I, again, will go back to use the syntax included in the instructions. And I'll copy and paste my consumer key and my consumer secret key um, and the file is noted. Uh, the quotes do need to be there. So please leave the quotes and replace only the unique set of letters and numbers that were assigned to you uh, by Twitter. So on the Twitter side, this when we create our tokens and you'll see a pop-up happen. So the pop-up tells us that um, authentication is successful or not successful. This is how you know that you successfully logged into Twitter from R. So now that we're officially in R, I've updated my screen to remove uh, the consumer keys. Uh, we now are able to start talking uh, to Twitter. So uh, I'm going to close this window and I'm going to go back to the syntax that was provided and I'm going to pull information from Twitter now that I'm installed. So I'm going to run this bit of code to pull follower data about um, us, ARC evaluation. So to do that I'm going to run this code. So this says get followers for ARC evaluation and only retrieve 75,000. So we don't have that many yet, of course, but uh, we want to be careful to set a limit. If you were looking at other users that have a massive amount of followers, it could take you a long time to kind of get um, your, your request processed. Um, and then we're going to take all that information, we're going to dump it into a, a data set called ARC eval. Uh, so uh, ARC eval is created here. Uh, we can actually then come over here and if we wanted to print ARC eval. Uh, so within R we can get an idea of what it looks like. So you'll notice that uh, uh, we only have a list of numbers, so 1 through X, uh, in this case 320, and we have user IDs listed. Well, we don't know who those users are, but uh, uh, Twitter does. So what we're going to do is run a new line of code that says, uh, hey Twitter, instead of just pulling the user ID, can you actually pull all the information we can about that user um, so that we can look at other stuff including like well who follows them, uh, how many people they follow, where they're located, uh, what tweets they have out, what's their description, and so on. So we'll run that and again in the background here you'll see processing we're creating a new table that says ARC eval follower and um, if we want to kind of take a look at what that looks like see so we have a lot of new information coming out so we have name screen name user ID um, we have 17 more rows of variables uh, with 1310 or I'm sorry with 310 uh, additional cases that we can't see here on the screen so we know that we have a lot more data somewhere uh, so how do we get that data out of R well we're gonna have to pull it out into a CSV file so we can again run the bit of code that helps us to write to the CSV file and we're going to get some uh, output uh, from R. So the next step is to sort of look at that output and think about how we can get that into Kumu and then of course finally we'll want to use Kumu to make some maps. All right so at this point we've got our studio configured to talk to Twitter. Uh, we're pulling Twitter data. In the example, I only pulled follower data for one user. You could, of course, pull this for multiple users. Uh, in this case, I've pulled a total of four users. So I have ourselves, ARC Evaluation, I have AZENet, I have Devin Wisner, and of course I have Milwaukee Evaluate. So these are four different groups of people. Um, 
So these are four different users. And if we open the CSV, we'll take a look at the copious amount of information that we're actually getting from Twitter. So of course some of these are collapsed, but we can see uh, their user ID according to Twitter. We can see their actual name as they put it in, the screen name or Twitter handle, where they are, and we can look at things like their descriptions, uh, if they've included a URL, um, and then we have other stuff. So here we have information about friends and followers and statuses and uh, when the account was created and so on. So we have to sort of clean this data so that it talks to Kumu. We also have to keep in mind that we want to make a comparison, right? So we have four different users here that we'll want to compare to each other, which means that we have to somehow get them in the same database. So my solution was to basically just copy and paste and throw everybody into uh, the same uh, sort of master file. So what I've done here is I've created a sort of master file with uh, the users on each different tab here. Uh, so this isn't necessarily combining them together to the same database since they're on separate tabs yet, uh, but here I have everything kind of organized and all together so I can look at it at once. Uh, when I get everything into Kumu, I have to keep a couple things in mind. So with that, let's jump over to Kumu. All right, so starting in Kumu, the first thing I want to do is create my new project. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and call this International Chart Day. And that's the name for social network analysis. And we're going to just leave it as a public uh, project. All right, and then we have a couple different types of uh, ways that we can display the data. Uh, for this purpose, we want the map to kind of look like this. Uh, so we want icons for each user. You don't get that with the social network analysis. It looks at the network instead of like individual data. And we're not really interested in connecting systems at this time. Uh, so sort of counterintuitive here, but we're going to go with stakeholders, our map type. And what should we name the map? Call it International Chart Day Map. And so we will create my map. So to get our data into Kumu, uh, what we need to do is kind of format everything. So we want to think about what Kumu wants to see and what kind of data we have. So um, you can Google how to import data to Kumu, and you'll come to this page. I'll include it in the guide as well. Uh, there's a short video that you can watch, um, and there's some kind of information below. Uh, but basically, uh, Kumu needs three things from us, right? Uh, well, actually four. So basically, Kumu needs a few things from us. So we need to include a label. So Kumu needs a few things from us. These are the kind of headers that they're looking for. Label, type, tags, description, attribution education email. Uh, most of these are uh, uh, sort of variable depending on the type of data that you're using but some of them are unique to Kumu and we need to include them because well that's what Kumu is looking for when it looks at your data. So um, I've kind of organized everything based on what they had here into a final. So using that information I sort of converted the data that we have. Right, so I created a label using uh, the user's Twitter handle, uh, the type. Um, it's not really important here, uh, but we could uh, use this as a variable for comparison in the future, but we have person and company. Uh, some of them we weren't really sure, so we have blank or missing data. Uh, tags, this is meant to be the person's name or the company's name. Uh, and then of course, this is very important, this is who they follow. So this means that of course, uh, users or labels can exist multiple times. Uh, but they should only correspond to a specific uh, entity that they follow one time. So again, multi or user, single users can appear multiple times uh, in our data set. Uh, and we have other things in here. Description we included. Uh, I left out uh, geography. Uh, really wasn't important to us um, for this purpose, but that might be another one that you want to consider including. Uh, but we have followers count, friends count, statuses count, favorites. Uh, so we can kind of use all this data to manipulate uh, the map as it comes out on Kumu. All right, so this is ARC Kumu is how I've labeled it. I'm going to close this database because we don't need to look at it anymore. And I'm also going to close our sort of master that we had. So 
to uh, import this data to Kumu, it's super easy. Uh, you just kind of come to your uh, the file that you would like to import, and you can just drag and drop it uh, to Kumu. Uh, you'll see that Kumu will take a look at the data set, and it will also run a quick test on the data set so that if you have anything missing, or if it doesn't match up, or if there's something wrong, uh, Kumu will do its best uh, to kind of notify you on the front end. So then once your map generates, you'll see something like this. So these are all the users that we had. And right now it's sort of pushing all users into the same model, which is why everybody's uh, appearing to be the same. So let's cut that out a bit. So uh, let's go ahead and size by how many followers uh, each individual users have. So this will make the uh, cells with the largest followers bigger than those who have fewer followers, which will appear small. So we can see that with the with the exception of a couple outliers, everybody's pretty much the same size. Uh, you'll see the dots are moving around a little bit. Uh, even though this is a static data set, Kumu continuously crawls your data, which is why they appear to be moving around. And you can also move data points uh, within Kumu. This is one of the reasons why we're using uh, Kumu rather than something else. Uh, so uh, next we have a couple other options. We can connect by, this is going to be our network analysis option. We can apply filters to remove some of those users who we do or do not want to include, and we can also select color options. So on the color options, I think it makes sense to color everybody by who they follow. Uh, so remember we had the four different uh, users. We had Devin Wisner, ARC Evaluation, Milwaukee Eval, and Easy Evet. So if we color everybody by who they follow, we'll see that four color options emerge. Right down here in the legend, even though it's abbreviated, we can see who each individual user follows, uh, but still everything is kind of jumbled up. Uh, we can also see that some people have more than one color, suggesting that they follow more than one uh, um, uh, user. Finally, we want to examine the relationship among all users in relationship to who they're following. So here we can come down and connect users by who they're following. And Kumu does a really nice job of breaking everything up and providing us with a sort of neural network uh, that we can view uh, to sort of analyze uh, some data. So uh, we can see clearly there's four different groups. These are our four uh, different users we're looking at followers for, but we can also see these subgroups exist, right? So these people are blue and green, so they follow the ARC and Devin. Uh, these people are yellow and blue, so they're following us, the ARC, and AZE unit. But then we have other people over here who are following, for example, Milwaukee Eval and AZE unit, but not the ARC. So if we were interested in marketing our brand to um, Twitter users, we might want to figure out how we can better reach that population. Uh, we might create a special post that targets these uh, folks or uh, create a hashtag uh, that maybe interests them. Uh, we can do things like pull uh, Twitter description data for all these different users and sort of do a qualitative analysis to figure out what they're interested in and uh, what we're doing and sort of uh, figure out what we can do to bridge the gap. Um, we know that uh, we already know that these people already follow everybody in the group so we don't really have to do much there. So that's just a couple things we can do with this small chart. I think it definitely highlights the power of charts and uh, quickly and easily and efficiently conveying copious amount of information that's quickly uh, interpretable and digestible by uh, the users. So I think we we're successful in creating a, a powerful chart here. Hey everyone, thanks for celebrating the first annual International Chart Day with ARC Evaluation and Wisner Analytics. This is just one example of the power charts can have. We're excited to see what you come up with next and hope that our project inspired you. On that note, we invite you to do three things, or at least one of the following. First, use the hashtag EvalSnap to talk about your thoughts on our approach or to discuss the social network analysis method that you use. Second, conduct additional analyses on the map that we created and share the results with the EvalSnap hashtag. Third, create and share your own map using this method and be sure to tag us using our hashtag EvalSnap. With that, thank you for joining us for an awesome social network analysis party. If you have any questions, tweet, email, or call us at the links listed on your screen. Happy charting!